Welcome to my channel. My name is Angelo from the T-Squad family. Beautiful day in Michigan. We are at like 72 degrees right now. What better day than today to do the bearings on our Grand Design Reflection 312 BHTS. It has been two years. We were going to originally just repack them, but we have decided to replace them. There's a reason why. We were supposed to repack them every year, but this is like the second year. So instead of repacking them, we're just gonna replace them and we're good to go. So stick around and you're gonna see how we do our bearings on our Grand Design Reflection. 312 BHTS, I said that right, CD. You would be proud of me. Stick around, y'all. Welcome back everybody to my channel. If you have not subscribed, please do so by hitting that subscribe button. Go a step further, hit that bell and you will get notified for future videos like this. And I don't know why my tripod is this low. I can't get it. It's like a four foot, so I gotta bend down. You get it. So let me just talk to you about what we're doing here. I've got the Timken uh, grease bearing packing, okay. I've got a bearing packer. I've got uh, four seals that go with it. The large Timken bearings that go on the outer or inner. Yeah, we'll see. And I got the four small ones. So basically we're doing every single tire on the RV. And I didn't, I, I like, if you watch the KYD video, he goes with the Timkins. That's exactly what I would go with. I would not go with anything else. They are made in America. My, my brother-in-law Mike is gonna assist us again. Uh, give me a hand on these bearings. And boy, I'm excited to do these. So let's do this. All right, so we got some good weather, so we're gonna knock these out. And we took, of course you gotta lift your RV up. We put ours on these jacks. And we took both tires off. So Mike has taken the seal off. There, whoa. That is, you know what I think they did? They probably pumped it full. When I, when I purchased it, they were trying to do their checklist and they probably, Filled you know, up. wanted to dot their I's, cross their T's and just made sure and, and just load. That is a lot. Yeah. There's way more on this side than there was on the other side. So I wonder if the other side just got wore out. No, because grease don't wear out. No. It just, look at that. No. Wow. There's that, a lot in there. That is... There's even more than what was in that one. Yeah, that is a lot of grease, Mike. Well, like I said, I think they put two different kinds in there, so that's why it doesn't mix well. Right. When they, I think when they pumped it, they pumped it with the a darker grease, and it made it from that pink to like a dark purple. Right. We saved the best for last, huh? Yeah. The retaining ring to keep it from backing off. Okay. It just keeps the nut from turning back and off, coming loose. And that's got a flat spot on it, right here, and then locks into the into the edges. And then there's a flat spot here, mm -hmm. so it can't turn. So it won't allow this nut nut to turn. And we just unscrew this. You know what I want to note is, I don't know if all RVs have that. It's grease zerk? That grease zerk. I've never seen that before. That's and a really good option to be able to grease the bearings, and then you don't have to worry about taking it apart to grease them. Yeah, right there. And it's accessible through this dome here by popping this rubber out. 
you know, you can get at it when you paint this rubber off and it's accessible from the, uh, this will come out here. And then you can access the mm -hmm. insert through there. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the end of the rim has the pop that, that pops off to access this to get this out. So right. You can get it all out and then you can just grease the bearings, you know, once every three what it, months or right. whatever, a couple times a year, whatever you need to, to um, to make sure you got plenty of lubrication in the in the wheel bearings. And we got plenty of lubrication. No, we got plenty now. Yeah. <laughs> so the process would be to jack your vehicle up, make it safe. We can't tell you how to jack it. We did it our way. Uh, then you pop that ring, that seal off. Yeah, it's a, a seal cover, bearing cover. The seal, yep. And then, and then it's loose. Then you can take it and you can wiggle this, and that bearing will pop out. Get a hold of it. Mm -hmm. Get it off of there. There's, there's a spacer nut, and then there's the bearing. So what you're looking for here? Now, if they go bad, you can start getting flat spots in them, and you can feel it. And these feel actually pretty good. So. Um, if so, you start wearing out, you'll get flat spots mm -hmm, on them. Right. Or, in worst cases, it'll start chewing them up and you'll be missing one. Mm -hmm. But uh, these actually feel pretty good. How about the burn? Should you should you see orange through that? You might see some, but that's, you know, like I said, it depends on how often you're driving it. The mm -hmm. more you drive it, the more you're heating up these bearings. So okay. As long as it doesn't have any, any wear marks in it and or any flat spots in it. And it should be fine. And the, these these actually feel really good. So we'll just clean those up and repack them. Put these back. Yeah. In. Yep. And then uh, the back ones we'll, we'll take out. Repack those. Yep. Put a new seal in. Because whenever you take take this out, you always got to put a new seal in. Okay. Because your your chances are you're just safer to put a new seal in instead of a um, keep the keeping the old seal. Well, sometimes you can damage the seal as well when you pull it out, because right, when it's onto the race there. Right, because we're going to pull the bearing out anyway, and to look at it. But the only way to get it out is you got to basically tap it, tap it out with a. We use a, a brass rod like this, and we just put the, put it down in here, and we just tap it to knock the seal out. And then uh, it's usually it's better off to, to replace it after it's been knocked out of there. Yeah. So, Mike, that tool right there. This? No, that one right there. There yeah. is no way you could remove... This, this would damage it even worse. Yeah. This would almost tear it the way it, it is. You could use this tool, but it would probably tear it. Yeah, from completely. the other side from we the would other use side. it, right? Yep. But we, we've tried it. And right. there's it, no way. It did not work very well. No, and you could see how much tapping and, and how much oh, pressure yeah. we put on the on the um, the hammer to just to get that out. Right. And then it, it came out. And there it is right there. So we put this here just so it can collect all our junk. But yeah, you could see that. Um, there's, there's a seal. Yeah, it's it's still good, but we'll go ahead and replace it anyways. Right. It's just safer to replace the seal because the last thing you want it to do is have that seal fail and all this grease get into your bearings and mm. into your brakes because then your brakes are no good. Yeah. Because because then this grease will make your bearings or your brakes slip. So this stuff will ooze out into here and get slung around inside here. So it's always better if you pull this hub to replace that seal. Gotcha. I mean, for three dollars or whatever it costs for the seal, yeah. it's just safer. Yeah. See, you got gloves. I don't anymore, but I will. All right, here you go. <laughs> yes. 
it, it just you know you don't need, you don't want all your hands and all this stuff all yeah the time. But, uh, all over my camera so yeah so this is the seal that that's the old that we one. popped out so right. this we and will now, not use right you can sometimes you can see it where it's starting to get yeah, you, you can see the, that it rubber, rub, yeah. and it, it's rubbing on one side or whatever. So, like I said, it's just better off to replace it. And yeah, it's, and it and you can tell when we go to put it on, you can see that it's it's a little bit more to get it on. You really got to work it to get mm -hmm. it on there. So, yeah, so I know it, that that one was actually wasn't it like the rubber yeah, around the rubber it? had a had a had a gap and it looked like it was leaking by. A yeah, bit. because all the the grease was actually coming out on right, the out yeah. around the, around the edge of it. Yeah. Yep. So I will clean this one. We'll just make sure that it's clean. Also making sure that the drum is completely clean on the inside. That goes all the grease. You can see we're getting rid of, we're gonna put all new grease in there. Actually, we're not putting grease in the drum. We're putting grease in the bearings. Right. And they drop inside here. Right. Yeah, you don't have to pump that much grease in there it'll if, when you pump it in here it'll go into mm -hmm. the bearing chamber and then that's fine um, but I think this is a little excessive that is crazy that's just, that's just a little excessive like I said I think they were just like before we bought the RV they're like oh we better yeah. just make sure yeah honey. so we're, honey we're recording honey is Teresa by the way yeah that's my wife that's that's Teresa my sister. So I'm gonna clean the inside drum, oh, the inside drum here as well. The ideal thing is to use brake cleaner. Brake clean, yep. Which we don't have. We don't have, we did on the other ones, but this is, this. these aren't that bad. I wonder if more is on the, that side using more, but they should be using equally. Right, well the brake clean will just, just clean all the dust, yeah. dirt and the dust off. So let me show you what it looks like. We just cleaned it a little bit, got rid of all the dust. We cleaned inside the race area. And then now we are going to grease the the bearing. And here's the new seal. Yep. Looks just like the old one. And it's got that rubber inside right. Right. the rubber which, gasket like. Which faces back so it doesn't allow the grease to come through. And then this will go on after the bearing goes in. Right. And we're just we're going to put a new rear bearing on, just because we have them. Now we if we had the front wheel bearings, we would do that, but they gave us the wrong one. So we're just going to go ahead and do the rear Rears. bearings. And we can always do the fronts later, because those will come out easy. You won't have right. to pull the drum or nothing off to, to do the front. Right. But after inspection, this looks actually great. We were actually right. questioning, should we even replace, replace our bearings and just, just um, repack them? But we decided, you know what, we'll replace what we have. Yeah. And that's it. So and this is a this is what a manual um, grease packer. You just put the bearing in there like that. You put this down, tighten it down. And just what it's gonna up. and then you push down on it. Oh I could hear it coming through the creases and I could see it too. And then you unscrew it. And look at that. It's all through these these creases right here. Oh, well, yep, you can see it coming through both sides from there and the other side. And it just, yep. just forces all the grease into the rollers. So you got a good good grease connection. And all you have to do is drop this into the race. Take that and put that down in there. Like that. And that. We'll go on here, like so. And, and what you'll do a, is... We'll take a little piece of wood. Yep, this way he pounds it down nice and... You don't want to apply a hammer to this directly, because you'll dent, dent, it, it. dent it. So, so we so. can take and, and we can get a, a piece that's as wide as the, the uh, race with a seal, and then we can just tap it in. So it goes in even, and it goes in until it's flush. And you can see it going down right now. There you go. 
and that's it. it and it should be even or it could even go down a little bit if we right. wanted to but right and that's that's where the other one came off at it was flush and uh, so that should be fine and then we'll uh, move this out of the way and we'll slide the slide the new one on now this will go on Gotta get it by the brakes. I think it was. There, there we goes. go. <laughs> you know what happens is when I'm holding it and you're like pushing it on, it like just went on right. the same as the last one. So, yeah. and it, you know, it's got to pop by the seal. Right. And that's right. what it's doing is because the seal is brand new. It's got a spring in there that holds the holds <laughs> the, the rubber at a certain place. So it's gonna go on a little bit more difficult to go on. And then it pops on, and then now the front bearing, like I said, if we wanna change the front bearings, they're real easy, because we don't have to pull this drum now. All we have to do is take this lock nut off, pull a tire, take the lock nut off, take that off, pop the bearing out, put a new bearing in, and we're good. Mm. So the front bearing is very easy to change without taking the drum off. Okay, we got... Uh, the old bearing is here. Yep, right there, it's all cleaned up. Same thing, we're gonna just take this. This is our manual. Grease packer, we'll put that in there like that. Screw this down on here. And this forces all the grease through the bearings. When you screw this down, it's a cone shape. Screw it down until it's snug. And then you push it down. Right there. Oh yes. I don't know why okay. that is like pretty cool. <laughs> it needs to be greased. Yep. And then you go on there like that. Because if you didn't have this, you know how to grease it? You'd have to put it in your You'd put it in cuff, the palm of your right? hand yep. and then just and then just constantly rub, 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 trying to force the grease into those rollers. So you're sitting here for twenty minutes a bearing trying to cram all that because you just put put a, a wad of grease in your palm of your hand and you're just just constantly rubbing it till it does the same thing. And eventually it'll work its way into the bearings. Works its way into yeah. the rollers. That's the old old school way to do it mm -hmm. before they, if you don't have something like this. This is a really nice, convenient tool to use for bearing <laughs> packing. It's They make some really nice ones that have uh, air compressor or electric powered or whatever, so it forces the grease in so you. But these ones here for just a hand packer, this thing here, you can't beat this. I'll put that link in the description below as well. Uh, so this way, everything we have here, except the bearings, because all RVs are different. All, um, what do you call it, axles right. are they different. Could be different manufacturers. Yeah, so that's why I don't want to put what I used on this. Plus, we, we went to Tinkin. Timkins, yeah, Timkins, which is so the... American made, yeah. instead, of, instead of China, which is what came off of here. Yes. And we, we used everything from Timken, from the oil to the bearings. And the, the only thing that we didn't use, because we could not find Timkins in this, is we used the, uh, the SKF. And I asked Sandy about the SKFs, and she said, yeah, that's a good brand, go for it. It's this part, so I, my oh. bad. Uh, so he... So I put the, I put the, I put the uh, all I did was I put the uh, spacer washer on there. Which is which is yeah. here? Okay, that, that black that spacer, washer. yeah. Which then pushes the bearing it, in, it right? It pushes up against the seal, the seal, or not the seal, but the race, okay. the inner race. Uh -huh. So that way, you're forcing the bearing in there to be on the race. So it's it's actually rolling on the rollers of the bearing, not if you don't put it on there. Like right now, it, if you wiggle it, see it wiggly. The entire drum wiggles. Right. So once you tighten this down, and it doesn't have to be super tight. You know, I mean, you can see how, how hand tight it was, barely hand tight when we took it off, but you just want to get tighten it up enough to get that wobble out of there. So then we take and we just take, take a pair of pliers and turn. Now he'll check it again. It's wobbling a little bit more. 
There we go. Now it's now good. It's now good. It's I just saw that in. move right on. Yep. So never give up. Yep. And it doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be super tight. And there's no more wobble. Nice spin. Yep, there it is. And then you got the retaining ring, which again has a flat here. So it matches up to the flat here. And then you're going to put this on and just snap it on like that. And it goes over top of the, the nut like that. And that prevents the nut it from... It keeps it from backing off. From backing off. Right. So pretty neat. And then you just put this back on. You're noticing how he's cleaning everything because he doesn't want no dust, no dirt on it. Right, nothing to get in the bearings. And yeah, the dirt and dirt in the bearings not good. And then we put that on there. Doesn't take much, huh? And there you go. And that's it. I think, you know, without us talking, I think you did one bearing, and I'm going to say within within five to eight minutes. Yep. One set of drum. Yep. Uh, now the best part. So now we have the bearings done. Now the best part is to put the tires back on. And don't forget, we probably won't go over that video real quick, but or that put installing the tire real quick, but don't forget, when you do install your tire, there is a torque setting for pounds per foot. Right. Pounds per foot, you have to do. Every vehicle is different. Mike said he does top, bottom, left, right, and, and diagonal. And no. diagonal. So you got six, so you just want to crisscross. Yes. Opposite sides. Yep. Until, and then until they're all tight. Yep. And then torque it. And then, then after you get them all tight by hand, then then torque with torque them until they pop the pop the torque wrench. Yeah. This is just a standard torque wrench. It's got the settings on it. How many foot pounds? You know, ratchet and a socket. We got a socket. Um, then you can just set it. It goes. Also has a three eighths adapter for smaller sockets for smaller smaller bolts. Impact for the lug nuts. Oh we yeah. Mm-hmm. This way we can torque it to the proper right. Right. settings. We, have, uh, we also use a battery powered impact driver to make it a little bit to easier. To make it quicker. Yeah. Right. And that's what we use for that. Yep. Just to put it on and then we use then the we torque, torque right. too. So what we did, we installed this mow ride yesterday. You can check that video out. It's coming out soon or it even might already be out. But, um, and what it did was it dropped the double axle. It dropped it, what, about an inch? inch. Yeah. About so an we inch. Got, we got an inch more clearance. So we had to jack up the RV a little bit more to get the tires on the other side up. So let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, uh, a bit. just a little bit, not bad. Yep. Not bad at all. Not like the other side, I think it was. The thing the jack stands were on there, the jack blood off. So all the weight was on the jack stands. Wow, that's why it's important to have your jack stands, right? right? I mean, it's... Yep. Absolutely. Or I'd be waking up like... Yep. How, how oh, would yeah. I be waking up like this? Oh, yeah, it would be tipping over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be tipping over. Right. All right, so let's get this tire on. Okay. Uh -huh. Can we get it in there? Then we got the lug nuts here. Oh, this one. And of course, the one that has no glasses is doing this. I can see it. Where's your readers? I don't know where I put them. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, there you have it for the bearings. It was sunny when we started, it is now cloudy, it is now raining. Hey, I wanna give a special thanks out to Mike, my brother-in-law from MJM Electric. Uh, he just, he's a wonderful guy, helped me out all the time and and he just insisted on helping me on the bearings and insisted on helping me on everything else that we did to our RV during our stay here at the Teresa and Mike Ranch on the farm, I guess. But Mike, special thank you to you. Hey, everybody! If you're in the Mich if you're in Michigan and you're in Northern Michigan, um, around the Macomb County area, MJMElectric.net. Check him out. 
a wonderful guy. You know, if it's a last minute thing, he might jump on it. Uh, but uh, I'm really appreciative that he got a chance to help me. But hey, thanks again for joining and we'll catch you guys in the next video.